हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग द केमिस्ट्री पोर्शन ऑफ योर एकलव्य एंट्री टेस्ट लेट अस क्विकली सी हाउ यू डिड इट वेयर यू डिड द मिस्टेक एंड वेयर यू गॉट इट राइट यस सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द टेस्ट इज नॉट अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन आई विल से बट डेफिनेटली यू शुड बी वेरी कॉशियस वेरी केयरफुल टू अवॉइड एनी काइंड ऑफ सिली मिस्टेक राइट सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू दैट यू हैड इन योर टेस्ट uh it is you just just need to check the statement and tell whether they are true or false so very first statement is vapor pressure is a colligative property false relative lowering of vapor pressure is a colligative property not vapor pressure so first statement is false guys second boiling point of solution is always higher than that of a pure solvent again a false statement this is true if if the solute is non volatile not always true so again a false statement next acetic acid undergoes dissociation in benzene this only tells us that this is a false statement because acetic acid in benzene undergoes association not dissociation so the benzene in benzene as a solvent your acetic acid molecules undergoes association due to intermolecular hydrogen bonding yes of course if the solvent is water then your acetic acid undergoes dissociation so third statement is also a false statement let us look at the fourth statement entropy of solution is more than the entropy of pure solvent of course more randomness in solution more particles so entropy of solution is more than the pure solvent so the fourth statement is a true statement so first three are false and the fourth one is true so definitely we will go by answer b right false 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 and true so indeed that is the right answer guys b option if you mark b You got it right. Let's move on to the next question, which is from chemical kinetics, right? So let us have a look at this question. In the formation of HBr from H two and Br two, following mechanism is observed. There is a mechanism how HBr is being formed from H two and Br two, right? Calculate the rate of reaction if the concentration of hydrogen is twice than that of bromine, and the rate constant is equal to one Rutherford. The concentration of bromine is one molar. So to solve this question one thing that you are required you are expected to know is the rutherford and dps the conversion disintegration per second dps unit you can see in the options given right and the rate constant for this reaction is given in rutherford so you should know the relation between these two units that we generally use for you know uh, radioactive decays and every other kind of nuclear reactions right so if you know the relation between rutherford and dps you can easily crack the question so one rutherford rutherford is a unit yes one rutherford is equal to 10 to the power 6 dps if you know this conversion this question is a standard typical question of chemical kinetics right so by looking at the mechanism we can see the first step is the equilibrium step and the second step is the rate determining step the slowest step so i can write the rate of reaction as rate is equal to k dash say concentration of h2 and concentration of br free radical because second step is the rate determining step right but br free radical is an intermediate not the reactant uh, neither the reactant not the product so i should replace this br free radical concentration with br2 Right with the concentration of Br two, I should replace it. Right. So how can I do that? I can do that by first reaction by using the expression for equilibrium constant from the first reaction. And of course, I can write from first reaction the equilibrium constant. How can I write the equilibrium constant? The equilibrium constant from the first reaction is the concentration of Br free radical raised to Br two upon the concentration of br2 right so from here i can get the expression of concentration of br free radical in terms of br2 right so that will be so i can replace here right so ultimately what i'll get guys what i will get i can write the expression rate expression finally replacing the concentration of So I get this K K equilibrium half the concentration of H two and the concentration of Br two raised to power half. So I replace the concentration of 
Br free radical by Br2 and this is my rate constant you can say k dash and that is equal to 1 rather for that is 10 is to 6 dps. The concentration of H2 is twice than that of Br2. So that means if Br2 is 1 molar, answer for the question this will be 2 molar. Putting the value you will get your answer very easily. So you get the rate of reaction, right? Yes. So question, beautiful question I will say on chemical kinetics. So indeed, if you get it right guys, I am sure you marked it correctly, right? So this way you will get your answer as 2 into 10 to the power 6 dps. So here we go. The answer is A option. So the answer is A option 2 into 10 to the power 6 dps is the rate of the reaction. So let us move on to the next question which is again a graphical question, graph based question from chemical kinetics. Chemical kinetics, zero order, first order reactions, the graphs are highly important, very important guys. So you should definitely do it. Which is the incorrect graph? You have to look for the incorrect graph, right? So first graph is given for second order, second for first and at given concentration and order. And the, third, uh, the fourth one is for again first order. So you should know the uh, relations of the concentration with time, the rate for all the respective orders. By looking at all these graphs, I can clearly see this ratio, the ratio of time with respect to concentration for the first order has to be constant. And this value should be constant, not increasing with time. With concentration, this ratio should not increase this ratio because this is a ratio. Ratio of when the 75% of the reaction is complete and T half. Right? So this has to be constant, not this graph. So indeed it is a wrong graph guys. So D donkey is the incorrect graph that you should mark. Right? Rest are fine guys. Now the question number fourth. Which of the following compounds are complex ion would not show geometrical isomerism? So a beautiful question from coordination compounds. And isomerism indeed is an important topic from coordination compound that you should definitely do. So we have four different complexes given in this. Yes, you should know which will show geometrical isomerism, which will show optical isomerism. So basically isomerism, be it stereoisomerism or structural isomerism, that is important part from coordination compounds, right? And uh, you can refer any reference book. There is uh, precisely the tables, the charts given, right? How many uh, geometrical isomers, how many optical isomers, in which type of complex that is also given. Like you can refer the inorganic chemistry for J.E. from uh, like by J.D. Lee and Sudarshan Gua. So you can refer those books. There are beautiful charts given for the isomerism part, the you know conclusion sort of you can say. So which of the following complex I would not show geometrical isomerism. So as you can see in the first there is a glycinato ligand right and it has nitrogen as a donor in glycinato and oxygen. So from which site is this donating, how it is attached that can give rise to geometrical isomerism, right? In other also you can see this is a scare, uh, this is this complex, platinum complex, ethylene diamine as a bidentate ligand, chlorine bromine that can also give to cis and trans isomerism, right? Here we have this complex, ethylene diamine is also a bidentate complex, right? Bidentate ligand, sorry. So ethylene diamine is also a bidentate ligand, but the donor atom is same, nitrogen, right? So it will not give rise to different linkages. So we have four SCA negative ligands and ethylene diamine one, it is a bidentate. So the coordination number here for cobalt is six, definitely. This is the complex which cannot show geometrical isomerism, guys. You can see this is the only arrangement with respect to each other which is possible. So Ethylene diamine, glycinato. Glycinato is also bidentate in other options. We have glycinato. But remember guys, in glycinato, the two donor atoms are different, oxygen and nitrogen. So how they are linked, right? So that can give rise to different structures. So the answer indeed is C. This will not show geometrical isomerism. The only existing form is this, right? So let's move on to the next question. What is the next question? Which of the following statement is true? So they are asking you the true statement out of all. So H3PO2, H3PO3, H3PO4 all are tri-basic. No, they are not tri-basic. Their valency factor or their basicity is not the same though. The formula shows three hydrogens in each but 
they are not ribasic. The valency factor indeed is different in each one of them, right? I hope you know the structures, right? Because it is very important to know the structure, guys. So let me show you the structures quickly. So this is H3PO4. So it can lose four hydrogens. H3PO4. So it is tri basic acid, right? Another is H3P. O3, H3PO3. This can lose these two hydrogens which are bonded to oxygen. So its valency factor is 2, it is diabasic. Whereas your H3PO2 is monobasic because only one hydrogen it can lose. Right? So they all are not tribasic. This is tribasic, this is diabasic, and this is monobasic. Right? So the first statement that was given. That is not a correct statement, guys. That is a false statement. Next statement is among anions, nitrate, sulfide, carbonate, and borate only SO3 to negative half P pi P pi bonding. No, we have sulfur, we have oxygen. So the bonding there is P pi D pi bonding. The P i orbital of oxygen that overlaps sidewise with the D orbital of sulfur. Sulfur has 3D, right? So it is a P pi D pi bonding, not the P pi P pi bonding. So be careful, guys. So, B is again incorrect option. Among the anions, these are the anions and SO3 2 negative is a basic and reducing in nature. So, SO3 2 negative, let us see what is the structure of this, whether it will be basic or reducing in nature. So, sulfur has 6 valence electron, right and SO3 2 negative ion is this. So, 6 valence electron. So, there is one lone pair right so that results into the basic or the reducing behavior of this ion in sulfate there is no lone pair guys so indeed so32 negative is reducing and basic in nature lone pair which it can donate right so that was the correct statement so c statement is finally the correct true statement of course we are looking for the true statement let us take the d statement also Number of lone pairs of electrons on xenon atom is XeF2. XeF2 is linear. Three lone pair. XeF4. XeF4. You know, I hope you know xenon. Noble gas, eight valence electron. Right? So, we have two lone pairs here. Scare planar structure. And XeF6. Six bond pairs and one lone pair. So, three, two, one. Again, incorrect because in XeF6, we have one lone pair. Six bond pairs. 6 electrons of xenon are forming bond with fluorine. There is one lone pair left. So, it has to be 1. So, that is also incorrect statement. So, the true statement is the C statement. You should mark C. Those who mark C, bingo, you cracked it right. Now, the next question, guys. So, this is a question based on the reaction of your fluorine with cold dilute NaOH or the concentrated. The products are different. So, you should know how your fluorine will react with dilute cold NUH or with concentrated NUH. So, these are the two reactions given and they are asking about the products A, B, C. So, you can see one product differs in both the reaction. If you use dilute or concentrated, let me show you the reaction guys. These are the reaction. If you use dilute NUH, you get OF2 and if you use concentrated, you get O2. Rest two, other two products are same. So, your A is... NaF, B is OF2 and C is H2O, right? And D is O2. And let me see what is the structure of OF2. Oxygen is a central atom with two lone pairs and this kind of structure similar to that of water bent structure, bent shape. Yes, guys. So, this is the structure. So, they asked us the options. We need to mark the option A is Na2FO2. No. B is F2, C is H2O2 and B has similar structure to that of C. Of course, B and C has similar structure. B is OF2 and C is H2O. Only D option is correct. A is NaF, B is OF2, C is H2O and D is O2. Right guys? So, indeed, the only option that is correct here is D donkey. So, let's move on to the next question, guys. The next question is, which of the following product is formed by the reaction of Mn 
plus 2 salt with peroxodisulfate. So what will happen? Peroxodisulfate, right? So I hope you know this redox reaction, guys. There is this redox reaction here that you should know, guys. The redox reaction here. Yes. So we have Mn plus 2. Let me show you. And we are reacting it with peroxodisulfate, right? Yes. So what will happen? Redox reaction will take place. Your Mn plus 2 will become permanganate ion. That means here you have plus 7 oxidation state, plus 2 to plus 7. And this will become sulfate. Right? Yes. So, this is the reaction that is taking place. Of course, you have to look for the product and I can see the options. The product is this. Done, guys? Yep. Is that fine, guys? Yup. Okay, let us move on to the next question. So, if it is a reaction, you can see your plus 2 will become plus 7, right? So, I hope you get it right, guys. Let's move on. This is a reaction you can see here clearly. Yep. Okay. Next question, please. Let us quickly go through the next question. A mixture of two white substances were dissolved in water. On passing Cl2 gas through the solution, a deep brown color is developed. Addition of BaCl2 solution to the original mixture gives a white precipitate. Addition of a large amount of NaOH solution to the original solution gives a white precipitate whose suspension in water is used as an antacid. The mixture gives lilac color in oxidizing flame. The mixture contains. So, a standard typical question I will say based on qualitative analysis, right? Yes. So, let's see. You have a mixture of two white substances were dissolved in water. On passing chlorine gas through the solution, a deep brown color is developed. Deep brown color. What is clicking, guys, for a deep brown color? Yes, deep brown, reddish brown bromine, right? Bromine on passing the chlorine gas, maybe the bromide ion, they are becoming bromine, right? The deep brown red liquid bromine is... Addition of BaCl2 to the solution of original mixture gives a white precipitate. BaCl2, there has to be sulfate ions, right? If a solution has sulfate ion and you add barium chloride, what you will get? Barium sulfate, the white properties of barium sulfate, right guys? So, of course, sulfate ion must be there. Addition of a large amount of NaO solution to the original solution gives a white precipitate whose suspension in water is used as antacid. If it is antacid, that means that is basic, which is used as antacid. Magnesium hydroxides. Magnesium hydroxide precipitates are white in color and it is used as an antacid. Remove acidity, right? The mixture gives lilac color in oxidizing flame. So, the flame test is also there. The lilac color, which ion, which metal ion, which alkali metal gives lilac color? Sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. All are the alkali metal which will give lilac color. Sodium will give golden yellow. Lilac will be given by potassium ion. So, my mixture must be having potassium ion, sulfate ion because with barium chloride it is giving white precipitates of barium sulfate. Some bromide ions must be there. Magnesium ion is there because they are talking about antacid. They are talking about magnesium hydroxide, white precipitates. So, all the story fits well with the option A. Got it guys? So, the option A indeed is the correct answer. We have potassium ion with, for lilac color. We have magnesium for antacid and white precipitates of magnesium hydroxide, bromide ion, that reddish brown color in the beginning and sulfate ions which give white precipitate with barium chloride. Next question guys, let's have a look at the next question. Which of the following statement is correct? So you have to look for the correct statement. In thiourea test for nitrite, a green colored solution is obtained. Thio urea test for nitrite. 
No, it is not a green color. The complex that we got in this test is a red colored complex, right? Deep red color complex because of the formation of which ion is being formed, let me write, which compound is being formed. So deep red color because of this is formed, not the green color. So this is not a correct statement. It is necessary to carry out chromyl chloride test in a dry test tube. Yes, it is very much required to carry out this reaction in a dry test tube because if water is there, it will give another reaction. It will form H2CRO4, right? So the desired reaction will not take place in the presence of water. So it is very much required in chromyl chloride test. We use a dry test tube. In lead nitrate, the brown ring test can be performed with its water extract. No, brown ring will not be, you know, visible clearly. Right? So, it will not be clearly visible because of the white precipitate formation. Suspension of cadmium carbonate gives black precipitate with sodium sulphide. With sodium sulphide, cadmium sulphide will be formed. And the precipitate color of cadmium sulphide is yellow, not black. So, this is also incorrect statement. So, they were asking us the correct statement. So, the correct statement indeed is B. So, guys, B is the correct statement that you should mark. So those who marked B, well done, perfect, good going guys. Let's see the next question. Purine has four nitrogen, which of the following are expected to be least basic. So this is the structure given, the least basic. Okay, let us have a look at all the nitrogens that we have. Nitrogen 1, double bond with a lone pair. Nitrogen 3, double bond with a lone pair. And nitrogen number 9 we have here, this is 7, this must be 7 guys, this must be nitrogen number 7, right? This is nitrogen number 7, clear? So, out of these nitrogen, the least basic, you can see 1, 3 and 7, they all are having lone pair and the nitrogen is doubly bonded, right? This is the nitrogen, all sigma bond and this is a lone pair which can participate in resonance, delocalization. So, this lone pair on nitrogen 9th, is not free for donation because it is involved in resonance. Rest all cannot participate in resonance. 1, 3 and 7. The lone pairs of these nitrogen cannot participate in resonance. So they are asking us the least basic one. Yes, which is not a good base. The lone pair which is involved, that is not free for donation. So the least basic, of course, are nitrogen number 9 is the least basic nitrogen, guys. So you should mark answer D. D is the correct answer for this, right? So the least basic nitrogen is D donkey. Got that, guys? Yups. Okay, let us move on to the next question. In the given reaction, there's this reaction given, right? Organic question, beautiful question from organic chemistry. So there's this alkene and I can guarantee if you have done the organic chemistry, Nicely, I am sure you can quickly guess the reaction hydroboration oxidation to give alcohol. So, in the first step, your alkene will get converted to alcohol. Addition will take place. Yes. And then, of course, OH because this is hydroboration, this is oxidation. Hydroboration, oxidation step, right? You get ultimately alcohol. Addition reaction take place. Now, tocyl chloride, right? So, what will happen? OH. Instead of OH, we get OTS. And then tertiary butoxide, a big bulky base. Elimination will be there, right? Anti-elimination will be there. So, what is the sequence of reaction, guys? So, first hydroboration oxidation, you get this alcohol syn addition, and then tocyl chloride, OH will be replaced by OTS, and then a big bulky base elimination will be favored. And of course, the last step, the elimination is anti-elimination. Yes, that is the anti-elimination opposite side. So, this is the final product. Again, an alkene you will get. So, let's see. We start with this and we obtain this. Both are alkenes. What is the difference? They are position isomers, right? The starting one and the final product, they are position isomer. The position of double bond is changed. You can see here, the position of double bond is changed. Yes. So, let's see what are the options given to us, guys. So, position isomer. The product Y is the position isomer of X, right? Of course, formed by the anti-elimination by base in the last step, of course, big bulky tertiary butoxide. 
leads to anti elimination and oxidation product of x falls d is both a and b so definitely i'll go by d option both a and b is the correct answer right so we'll mark our answer as d donkey i hope you get it right now the possible number of stereo isomers of the product of the following reaction would be again equation on organic chemistry from isomerism so this is given to us i hope you know the standard reaction shown by carbonyl compound ammonia and the ammonia derivatives addition reaction yes h2o is removed and you'll get the so what will be the product that you'll obtain after the reaction let me write the product first i have ph i have ch double bond ch c h double bond n right and oh of course there's this lone pair and oh will be there this is the addition compound form addition reaction shown by carbonyl compound this is the compound right now how many stereo isomers so let me see the stereo centers this double bond can show geometrical isomerism this satisfies the condition of this can also show geometrical isomerism seen in nt lone pair and oh right is there any uh any any chiral carbon in this molecule no there is no chiral carbon so of course optical isomerism is not there and we have two stereo you know genic centers where it can show stereo isomerism so of course the formula is 2 raised to power n n is the number of stereo centers so i will get my answer as 4 right 2 raised to power n n is the number of stereo centers so i have got two position double bond which can show geometrical isomerism so 2 raised to power n n is 2 here in this molecule and of course the answer is 4 so those who marked 4 there is no chiral carbon guys you will get it right next question let's have a look at the next question the ionization constant of each h a and b o h are this the ionization constants are equal same the percentage of degree of hydrolysis of b at the dilution of 10 liter is so they are asking you about degree of hydrolysis so both acid and base are weak guys right so both are weak guys so the degree of hydrolysis let me write h they are asking us about h is equal to this is the formula for the salt of weak acid and a weak base both are weak right and of course kw is given to which is known to 98 calvin is 25 degrees celsius the ionic product of water is of course 10 is to power minus 14 and both are equal that is 6 into 10 raised to power minus 7 right yes so what i will get is so we have h over 1 minus h is equal to 1 by 6 so from here we can calculate h degree of hydrolysis this is the formula relation between degree of hydrolysis and the dissociation constant of acids and uh, bases both are weak acid and base are weak so this formula we can apply and of course we can get the value of h right so i hope the basic formulas you use this question is from ionic equilibrium right and indeed the answer is 14 you will get h as 0 0.14 that makes your answer as 14 percent got that guys the percentage they were asking you so direct formula application but you should know the concept of hydrolysis of salt and the, all the cases cases of salt of strong acid strong base weak acid strong base weak base strong acid and if both acid and bases are weak so the answer is c guys let's have another question a sample of water has a hardness expressed as 120 ppm of calcium. That means 120 ppm is parts per million. What does that mean? That means if you take 10 is to 6 grams of water, it has 120 grams of calcium ion, right? Parts per million. Now, the sample is passed through an ion exchange column. The sample is passed through ion exchange column where your calcium ions are replaced by H positive ions, of course what is the ph of water after it has been treated so your calcium ions from water they are replaced by h positive ions of course you know it has to be neutral so calcium ion has two positive charge 
So one calcium ion is being replaced by two H positive ion. Right? Yes. And how many calcium ions are there? How many calcium ions are there? Initially 120 ppm. That is the hardness of water guys. 120 ppm. That is the hardness given here. Yes. So you can calculate. I can say 120 grams of calcium ions are present in 10 raised to power 6 gram of water or you can say ml of water density of water is 1. Right? So 120 grams means how many moles of calcium ion given mass? Atomic mass. 3 moles of calcium ions you can say. Right? 3 moles of calcium ion. So if you have 3 moles of calcium ion that is being replaced by 6 moles of hydrogen. Ions. So, you have 6 moles of H positive ion. Right guys? So, 6 moles of H positive ion. What does that mean guys? 6 moles of H positive ion. Now, you have to calculate the pH. Right? So, but please for pH you need concentration of H positive ion. This is the moles. Moles divided by volume. Volume of water. Density of water is 1 gram per ml. So, I can say 10 to the power 6 ml of water because density is 1 contains 6 moles of H positive ion. So, just calculate the concentration, the pH of the water. You are supposed to tell the pH. pH is minus log of H positive ions concentration. And what is this concentration? This is molarity, moles by volume. How many moles in how many uh, milliliters, right? 1 gram per ml. So, 10 to the power 6 ml of water contains 6 moles of H positive. And I hope you can get the molarity. And finally, you can calculate the pH. So, guys, I hope you get it right. This is not a tough question. I am sure you can easily do it. And the answer that you will get is 2.2, right? So, the basic log values, log 3, log 2, that is being used here and you are expected to know at least like log 2 value, log 3 value, log 5 value, 7 values. So, these values are expected to know. So, the answer is indeed B guys. Let us move on to the next question, question number 15. Consider the following statement and arrange in the order of true and false. Again true and false they are asking us. Let us read. The reaction 2H2O2, H2O is not an example of redox reaction. Indeed, it is a redox reaction. It is a disproportionation reaction, right? So, that statement is a false statement because it is a redox reaction. Statement S2, the equivalent mass of ferrous oxalate in acidic medium is molar mass by 3. So, let us see what is the valency factor, ferrous oxalate. So, ferrous will get converted to ferric ion and oxalate will get converted to CO2. So, one electron loss by ferrous to ferric. And oxalate will become because oxalate is C2O4 2 negative 2 carbons, right? And CO2 2. So total loss per molecule is 3. 3 electrons, one molecule is losing in the redox reaction. That is the valency factor of this ferrous oxalate. So equivalent weight is molar mass by valency factor, that is 3. So this statement is a correct statement. Wrong statement. Now the equivalent mass of a substance can be calculated without considering the reaction it undergoes. No, because the equivalent mass is not fixed. That depends upon the valency factor of the substance, right? So, we should know what is the valency factor, how much electron gain or loss is taking place by that particular species. So, of course, that is also a false statement. So, what should be the answer, guys? False, true, false, that is option B. So, redox reaction based equation. A question based on the basic concepts that should be very much clear with you to track the question, guys. So, let us move on to the next question. In an iodometric estimation, the following reaction happens. Let us see what is the reaction. Copper 2 positive ion with Ki liberate iodine. Iodine is being liberated and that iodine reacts with thiosulfate to give this reaction. 0.12 moles of copper sulfate was added to excess of Ki solution and the liberated iodine required 60 ml of hypo solution Na2S2O3, right? The molarity of hypo solution. Okay. 
सो मोल्स ऑफ कॉपर आय हाउ मेनी मोल्स ऑफ कॉपर आय कॉपर सल्फेट राइट सो टू मोल्स ऑफ कॉपर द रिएक्शन इज टू सी यू टू पॉजिटिव प्लस फोर आई नेगेटिव विल गिव यू सी यू टू आई टू एंड ऑफकोर्स आयोडीन इज लिबरेटेड दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस आयोडीन and this iodine for the reacts with hypo solution right so i can say by looking at the reaction two moles of copper will give one mole of iodine and one mole of iodine will react with two moles of hypo solution so i can say moles of copper ion is equal to moles of hypo hypo solution right by looking at the simple stoichiometry and how can i calculate the moles of uh, hypo that is molarity into volume right so moles i know that is 0.12 moles molarity is being asked in the question and the volume of the hypo solution is given to me that is 60 ml that is 60 so from here i can calculate the molarity volume is given moles i know from the equations right so iodometric titrations again redox question iodine is being liberated which is further being reacted with hypo solution so if you do it like this it is not a time consuming question right and of course you'll get your answer as 2 2 is the correct answer guys the molarity of the hypo solution will come out to be 2 next question question number 17 during winters moisture condenses in the form of dew and can be seen on plant leaves and grass the entropy of the system in such cases decreases as the liquid possesses lesser disorder as compared to the gases okay fine with the reference to the second law which statement is correct for the above process yes okay so gas becomes liquid a natural phenomena is happening what is the definition of second law in a spontaneous process the entropy of universe increases the process which is taking place spontaneously the entropy of the universe it is a universe right which is increasing and the entropy of universe means entropy of system plus surrounding now here my system the entropy is decreasing this is the process is happening right but the entropy of the system is decreasing right so if the entropy of system is decreasing but the process is spontaneous so change in entropy of surrounding must be increasing so delta s of universe is equal to delta s of system and delta s of surrounding right and this is negative as per the question the system entropy is decreasing but if the process is happening spontaneously the overall the entropy of the universe should increase this is the definition this is the statement of second law of thermodynamics so to make it positive that means the entropy of surrounding has to be positive there has to be more increase in the entropy of surrounding than decrease in the entropy of system so let's check the option guys the randomness of universe decreases no of course not for a spontaneous process the randomness the entropy of universe should increase the randomness of surrounding increases of course increase in randomness of surrounding equals not equal it should be more than right more than the decrease in randomness of system so indeed what is the correct option guys the randomness of surrounded increases and that increases more than the decrease in the randomness of system so that overall there is increase in randomness or entropy of the universe right i hope if your basics are clear if you know the second law of thermodynamics you will definitely get it right Question number eighteen. What is the minimum mass of calcium carbonate below which it decomposes completely to establish equilibrium in one point five liter container for the reaction? Right. So decomposition. Calcium carbonate decomposes to give calcium oxide and CO two. Let me write the reaction for you guys. Calcium carbonate, which is solid, that decompose on heating. to give calcium oxide which is solid and co2 which is a gas right got that so kc equilibrium constant 
that is the concentration of CO2 only at equilibrium because this is solid, this is also solid and the concentration of pure solids and pure liquid is taken to be unity. So, this is given. Yes. So, you got the concentration of CO2 at equilibrium. Yep. So, one mole of calcium carbonate gives one mole of CO2. So, the moles of uh, carbon dioxide that you are getting that can give you the moles of calcium carbonate simple super easy equation. Yes, because both are solid their concentration is unity. So, whatever is the value of equilibrium constant, right, volume is also given. You are getting the concentration of CO2 per liter, yes, and the volume is 1.5 liter that is given. So, you can clearly calculate from CO2 how many moles of calcium carbonate was there to make that much amount of CO2 at, because they are asking you the minimum at equilibrium. Right guys, so guys, concentration of CO2 is this, moles of CO2 because volume is 1.5 liter, it is per liter, these many moles and same is the moles of calcium carbonate required, one mole of calcium carbonate gives one mole of CO2. So, same moles of calcium carbonate and they were asking you the mass, the molecular mass of calcium carbonate is 100. So, you can get the answer in grams. The answer will be marked as B. Right? Next question, select the incorrect statement. Yes. So, the first statement is radial part of a wave function is dependent upon principal quantum number only. The radial part depends upon both N and L. Principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum number, not just only on principal quantum number. So, of course, this statement is incorrect. Let's check the other statements. Angular function depends on the direction only. Yes, of course, it only depends upon the angle direction and independent upon the distance. Uh, independent of the distance. Okay. So, B statement is a true statement. Psi square is the probability density of finding the electron at a particular point. Definitely psi square. Psi is the wave function, electronic wave function and psi square is the probability density. Radial distribution function gives the probability of finding electron. Yes, of course, we calculate the radial probability distribution function to know what is the probability of finding electron at a certain distance r. A good question, a conceptual question from atomic structure and incorrect statement of course clearly is A because the radial part of the wave function depends upon end, uh, n that is principal quantum number and l both not just on n, on n and l. So, that is incorrect guys. Let us move on to the next question. Which of the following is incorrect? Again, they are asking you the incorrect statement. Generally, the radius trend and the ionization energy trend across a period are opposite. Yes, of course. More is the atomic size. Right? Lesser is the ionization energy. They are opposite. Metallic and covalent radii of potassium are this and this respectively. Indeed, the metallic radius are in this order, out of covalent and metallic radius, which should be more metallic because in covalent radius, there is overlapping. The radius is expected to be less. So, of course, the metallic radius value should be more than the covalent radius value. Because you are not expected to know the value, you should just know which should be more, which should be less, right? Among lithium ion, beryllium ion, carbon ion, beryllium is the least stable. Just write the configuration, you will get to know the answer. One extra electron added in this. So, I will get 1s2. 2s2. In this, I will get the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Here, I will get 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Of course, you can see these are the stable configuration. So, this will be the least stable. Correct. Yes, this is also correct. This is also correct. Atomic and ionic radii of niobium and tantalum are almost same. Yes, this is true. What is the reason, guys? Why they are same? Niobium and tantalum, zirconium and hafnium because of lengthenide contraction not diagonal relationship the reason is lengthenide contraction so this is the incorrect statement they were asking you the incorrect statement half of the statement is correct but the reason they are giving because of diagonal relationship it is incorrect so you have to be very careful by simply looking at niobium tantalum have same radius if you take it as correct you will get it wrong so the questions are pretty easy guys but there are many chances to do the calculation mistake or the silly mistakes. You might interpret it wrongly. You might skip a point and everything. Right, guys? Yes. Is that clear? Yup. 
Okay, guys. So these are the questions which are from single correct. You have to select a single correct. Rest questions are numeric question. You have to solve. You have to tell the numeric value. Let's discuss those questions. So guys, now let us move on to the numeric value question. So here we have question number 21, which is based on solution and colligative property, right? So let's see, 2.24 grams of a mono basic acid is dissolved in 100 gram of benzene, right? The mass of that acid is given to you. Boiling point of solution increases by 0 0.16 degree Celsius. That is the elevation in boiling point. With respect to pure benzene, find the molar mass of the acid in benzene solvent and report your answer after dividing it by 100 and round it off to nearest integer. Yes, so you can clearly see the colligative property based question. Delta Tb, the elevation in boiling point is equal to Ikb into M. Kb is given to me. I is 1. 1, why I am taking it as 1? Because it is mentioned. Note, acid is neither getting associated or not dissociated. So, Venta factor is 1. And molality, mass of the solute is given to us. So, moles of solute, given mass by molar mass, right? Moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kg. This is how we calculate molality. Yups. So, Delta Tb is given to us. Everything is given from here. We can calculate the M, molar mass. Moles by mass of solvent. Moles of solute divided by mass of solvent is the molality. So, the elevation in boiling point, the colligative property, this formula, we can use to calculate our answer directly. Putting the values, I am sure you are not doing any calculation mistake here, right? And you can clearly get the answer as 4. So, just nearest integer you have to write, that is 4. So, Delta Db is equal to IB, KB into M. Let's see what is the next question. So answer that you are supposed to write here is 4. Next, if H2 plus half O2 gives H2O, let Delta Cp and del, uh, is equal to 32 Joule per Kelvin and Delta H at 27 degrees Celsius, this reaction is carried out at some other temperature in a fuel cell with 90% efficiency. The electrical energy produced is 3 into a kilojoule per mole. What is A? So, I can clearly see two temperatures are mentioned here, right? Yes. And of course, I need to cal uh, calculate the delta H at some other temperature because ultimately the formula, the efficiency of the fuel cell eta, how much work is obtained from it, how much heat is supplied to it, this is the formula I am going to use, right? And they are asking me this, efficiency is already given, eta is 90% efficiency is given. Delta H, if I can calculate, I will get to know the delta G, which is being asked here. Delta G is the useful work that is being taken out from the system, right? So, the question is basically they are asking delta G. So, delta H, you are supposed to tell, right? At some other temperature, this delta H is given at 27 degrees Celsius. You are supposed to calculate delta H at 87 degrees Celsius. So, I hope you remember the Kirchhoff's equation. How temperature can change the delta H. So, using the Kirchhoff equation, I can calculate the delta H temperature T2. T1 is given, 27 degrees Celsius is given. So, first use Kirchhoff's equation. You know delta H at temperature T1. You can calculate the delta H at temperature T2 using Kirchhoff equation. Once you get the delta H value, guys, then you can apply the formula. So, this is the Kirchhoff equation. Delta H2 minus delta H1 upon T2 minus T1 is equal to delta Cp. That remains same as it is, you know, given in the equation. So, putting the value, you can calculate the enthalpy change, the delta H value at 87 degrees Celsius. So, now you get this delta H. And efficiency is 90%. You know that. So, you can calculate delta G. So, delta G will come out to be minus 3.994. Uh, that is minus 24 kilo joule. Right? And you have to, what is 20, minus 24? That is 8. Without considering the negative sign, you have to write. Got that, guys? Yes. Done. The magnitude you have to write. Yep. So, thermodynamics based question. The answer is. Eight. Next, the 
एच पॉजिटिव कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो वन मोलर एच टू टू सोल्यूशन इज एच टू टू सोल्यूशन मोलरिटी इज गिवन यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट द एच पॉजिटिव माइनस कॉन्सेंट्रेशन के ए वन इज गिवन एंड के ए टू द सेकेंड डिसोसिएशन कॉन्सेंट इज ऑलमोस्ट जीरो फिल योर आंसर एज टेन रेज टू पार माइनस सेवन सो वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू यूज यू हैव एच टू ओ टू सोल्यूशन द टोटल एच पॉजिटिव आइंस कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज इक्वल टू आई होप यू नो बिकॉज सेकेंड डिसोसिएशन कॉन्सेंट इन जीरो के इन टू सी प्लस वी नीड टू कंसिडर द रोल ऑफ वॉटर ऑल्सो बिकॉज दिस राइट आई हैव टू कंसिडर द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वॉटर इन एच पॉजिटिव आइंस इन दिस सोल्यूशन राइट So water will also be contributing. So Ka one is given to me eight into ten raised to power minus eleven. C concentration is ten raised to power minus three plus ten raised to power minus fourteen. So what I will get, guys? I will get it as nine into ten raised to power minus fourteen. That is ten raised to power minus seven three. So they were asking x. This is three. You have to write three in your answer. Got it? Yes. So the H positive ion from H two O two from water you have to consider, and this is your answer. So if you mark three, you will get the marks. Got it, guys? Let's move on to the next question. If d x by d t is equal to k into H positive uh, raised to power n, the rate becomes hundred times when p h changes from Four to two. So your pH is changing from four to two. Find the order of the reaction. So when the pH is four, that means H positive ion concentration is ten raised to power minus four. When your pH is two, right? So the rate becomes hundred times changes from four to two. So if the rate is R one, this becomes Hundred of R one, so you can use this relation to calculate for n. Yes, dx by dt is k into h positive raised to power n. So we got two relations here, guys. You can see, right? R one and hundred by R one that you can calculate easily. Yes, R one is. I can write R one is k into ten raised to power minus four n. This is the first equation, and this is R two hundred times. That is k into ten raised to power minus two. Right. So I've got two equation. Dividing the two equation, I can get the value of n. Right. By dividing these two equation, I can get the value of n. That is the order. This is n. They are asking you about order of the reaction. So you can get your answer easily. The order of the reaction will come out to be one, guys. Yes. So, dividing the two equations, you will get your answer. Next question: Among the following, the total number of orders which are incorrect. So, you have to look for the incorrect order, right? In this, with respect to the property indicated against each other. First, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, and phosphorus. The covalent radius. The covalent radius decreases along the period. That is correct. Next, ionic size. So, in B option, you can say they are isoelectronic species, guys. Right, so they are isoelectronic species, and for isoelectronic species, more is the atomic number, lesser is the size. For isoelectronic species, more atomic number means small size. So of course, oh my God, the order is different. So the smallest size should be of sodium, followed by fluorine, then oxygen, and then nitrogen. So there is some change in the order here. So this is wrong, right? Next is the ionic size. Again, you can see the ionic size order. So this is very important, guys. You should know the size of lithium is more than that of magnesium. It is written in NCERT also. Though you will feel, oh, my lithium ion has less a number of shell than magnesium ion, but it is written the size of lithium. The values are also, though it is not much bigger in size, lithium ion is more than magnesium ion. So this is also correct. Electron affinity also, right? Electron affinity. So I can clearly see, you know, as we move along the period, the affinity increases. Down the group, affinity decreases. But the first member, because of the small size, its affinity is less. So if you see this option, guys, I am sure you all know. 
chlorine has more electron affinity than fluorine right because of the small size of fluorine there will be interelectronic repulsions on addition of extra electron so the electron affinity of chlorine is more <coughs> than fluorine this is also wrong first ionization order of course magnesium stable configuration so more ionization energy than aluminium and second ionization of course you can write the configuration this is a, a previous year j equation previous year and uh, the third ionization energy third nitrogen phosphorus and uh, arsenic antimony bismuth this is the element so it should be nitrogen then phosphorus then arsenic and then sb so this is also the wrong order right this is also wrong order rest all are fine yes got that so how many orders are wrong guys second is wrong and then we have this is also wrong order and this is also wrong order so three orders are incorrect as per the property indicated and they were asking us the incorrect order so we'll mark our answer again as three right okay so a beautiful question you can clearly see the picture blue white rayol in blue white rayol we have cuso4 dot 5 h2o so out of 5 h2o you can see 4 h2o are forming coordinate bond with this copper and one water molecule is bonded with hydrogen bonding so n is the hydrogen bonded water molecule and m is the coordinated bonded water molecule so the coordinated bonded water molecule is 4 and the hydrogen bonded is 1 so what is the value of m by n that is 4 out of 5 4 are donating the lone pair coordination bond coordinate bond they are forming and one you can see this one water molecule is forming hydrogen bonding this is bonded by hydrogen bonding so out of 5 h2 one is hydrogen bonded rest four are coordinate bonded so the answer of course we will mark it as four easy question right and time saving also if you know the structure next question is the coordination number of the metal ion in the red complex and found by the qualitative analysis test of ferric ion and b is the magnitude of charge on the coordination sphere so i hope you know this is the complex from the for the detection of ferric ion yes ferric ion this is the complex you can clearly see now they are asking you about first you should know the complex yes and second thing that you should know what is coordination number which are basic things and the coordination compound right so quickly see guys yes so question is based on coordination compound so if you know the complex you can easily answer it right so guys the complex is right in front of you yes this is the complex sign okay so in the chat box of this video can you please tell me which test is there and what is the color is there any color to this complex this is an important complex guys let me tell you so you can see the coordination number is six there are six ligands h2o 5 h2o and what SCN negative right so six ligand the coordination number is six and the charge on the coordination sphere is two because SCN is minus one and there is this ferric ion right so you have to tell the coordination number and the charge the sum of both six plus two that is eight right so if you know which complex is there this what is the color of this complex do write me in the comment section of the video guys qualitative analysis the uh, detection where there are complex compounds the color formation they are very important so basically if there is a reaction in which there is a coordination compound or a complex formation with color it covers basically three chapters one is coordination compound another is dnf block because you are talking about like metal ions and third is qualitative analysis so one question is you know belonging to three important areas so that makes it all together very important so all the reactions in an organic chemistry where there is a complex formation and that to a colored complex formation is there they are highly important next question and how many species positive charge is delocalized where the positive charge can undergo resonance or delocalization let's check it out guys so here this is phenyl this carbon is sp hybridized and this positive charge uh, 
the orbital of this this cannot overlap with the adjacent because of the uh, there is no matching of symmetry with the adjacent orbital phenyl carbocation is highly unstable right now again we have this it can undergo resonance definitely here there are all sigma bond the oxygen having positive charge all sigma bond and sigma bond cannot be broken in delocalization resonance is a pi effect so it cannot okay this can do resonance yes positive charge can be delocalized this pi bond can shift and again this nitrogen is forming all sigma the positive charge cannot be delocalized here nitrogen is also forming all sigma so it cannot be delocalized right so how many species in how many species your positive charge can undergo delocalization the answer will be two right guys the answer is indeed two species okay let's move on to the next question calculate the potential of the following cell in volts there is this cell you can see hydrogen electrode is used anode right hydrogen is electrode anode left side of the cell representation anode hydrogen is the anode and you have mno negative converting to mn plus 2 that is your cathode where reduction is taking place so you can clearly write the overall reaction hydrogen is getting oxidized and your mn is getting reduced you can write the overall reaction of this react uh, of this cell the uh, redox reaction happening in this cell and let's see what else we need standard reduction potential standard, uh, standard cell potential is given e naught is given because we know for SHE stranded hydrogen electrode it is zero, right? So cell potential is also given to us. Okay, standard cell potential E naught is given, and we are expected to calculate each cell. The very famous equation from electrochemistry, very very important, one of the highest weightage topics from electrochemistry that is the Nernst equation. So simply write the redox reaction happening in this cell by looking at anode and cathode, right? Yes, just take care of the electron gain and loss should be equal. And then the Nernst equation, right? E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.059 upon N log of reaction quotient. So just direct application of Nernst equation in this question, but you have to be very mindful as I told you N, what N? This is the reaction happening at anode, oxidation of hydrogen. And this is the reaction happening at cathode, right? Reduction of Mn from plus two uh, plus seven to plus two five electrons. So gain and loss has to be equal, right? So number of electron transfer that is ten. This is the one thing that you are supposed to be very mindful. Otherwise, the question is simply based on the most important topic. I will say the Nernst equation. This is the equation. So Em is equal to E cell that is given to you. Zero point zero six by n. This is important, guys. You can make mistake here. Ten. And uh, from this reaction, you can rea write the reaction quotient. Every other values is given to you. The concentrations are given to you in the cell representation itself. You can put the value and your answer will be 145 volts. Right? The only mistake you can do is while writing this reaction and this n, the number of electrons. This here you can make the mistake, guys. So just keep in mind in redox reaction, number of electrons gain and loss should be equal. At anode, oxidation is taking place, loss of electron. At cathode, reduction is taking place, gain of electron. So both should be equal. Got it? So 145 is the answer, guys. Question based on electrochemistry. Let's see the last question of the test. What is the last question of the test? Let's have a look. When 100 ml of 80% W by V NOH is mixed with certain amount of 40% W by V NOH solution of density 1.2 gram per ml, the percentage concentration of the Final solution becomes 60 percent W by V. Find the molarity of the final solution, guys. So, what exactly are they asking? They are asking about the final concentration of the solution, right? Yes. So, you have 100 ml of 80 percent W by V. What does 80 percent means? 80 gram of NaOH is present in 100 ml of solution. Is mixed with another NOH solution which is 40 percent W by V that means that 100 ml of that solution contains 40 grams right and I don't know the volume but I know the density right certain amount of 40 percent W by V NOH solution of density density is given the percentage concentration of the final solution becomes 60 percent right so let me tell you I have 
solution one of NOH. I have solution two of NOH. This is eighty percent W by V. This is forty percent W by V. Right. This has a volume hundred ml. Volume is not given, but density is given. How much is the density of this? Right. So you mix both the certain amount, right? And finally, by mixing the two solution, you got a solution of NOH, which is sixty percent W by V. You are expected to calculate the molarity of the final solution. So molarity of the final solution. For calculating the molarity of final solution, you need moles and volume of the final solution, right? You mix two solution. You know the volume of first, right? Hundred ml. You took hundred ml of first, but you don't know how much you took this solution. By mixing, you get a solution which is sixty percent W by V. That means in this solution you have sixty grams of NaOH. 100 ml solution right yes got it guys perfecto the molarity you have to calculate so molarity you need two things one moles how much moles you have taken from this How much moles you have taken from this total moles by total volume from solution one from solution two? The volume from solution one is known to you guys, right? The volume from solution one is known to you. You don't know the volume from solution second, right? And masses you can calculate. Masses also you can calculate. Yes. masses you can calculate guys so from here i can see how much nh is there 100 ml i took 80% w by v that means 80 g of nh i took 100 ml means that has 80 g of nh from second solution right second solution i know the density is 1.2 volume i don't know right volume i don't know so what i can do i can write the mass in terms of volume right in terms of v2 i can write right so for example the density is given to me let me get it from here yes density is mass upon volume volume i don't know density is 1.2 right so mass i have taken from here that is 1.2 v gram i can say from here the mass is 80 grams from here the mass is 1.2 v grams the mass of nh and the mass of naoh yes clear so the volume here is 100 ml the volume from here is v so i need to calculate the molarity the final molarity of the solution yups okay now i hope this is clear what i know about this i know the total mass of nh divided by total volume is 60% right so what we can do guys what is the total mass 80 g plus 1.2 v g what is the total volume 100 ml plus v ml right so i can put that is equal to 60 from there i can calculate the value of v that is required once i get the value of v i can calculate the molarity i know the moles taken from these i know the mass because moles also i need right so by using this last information 60% weight by volume that means total mass divided by total volume mass by volume mass of solute so in final solution in final solution obtained by mixing the two the weight of solute from one it is 80 g from second it is 1.2 v g this is the total weight divided by total volume from first it is 100 ml from second how much volume they we took from second it is v 
Yups. Done. Perfecto. Yups. This is in 2.4 because 40% is also given to us. That is 40%. This is 40%, right? Rate by volume. So this equal to into 100 total mass by total volume is equal to 60. That is 60% W by V, the final solution from here. You can calculate V. Once you get V, you know the molarity will be the total moles from both the solution divided by total volume. Total volume will be V plus 100 in ml. Of course, you have to convert it into liters. So, it can take time, little bit of time, not much time, I will say. Yes, to solve this. Got that? So, guys, let me tell you the final. The answer will come out to be 15. The molarity, final moles, that my final volume. Right? Done, 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 done. So, this is the answer. A stoichiometry based equation, you can calculate the two solution to NOH solution with different mass, uh, like mass by volume percentage, they are mixed to obtain a final solution having a different mass by volume percentage and you are asked to calculate molarity. To calculate molarity, you need moles, you need volume. Got that guys? Perfecto? Yes? So let's see the last question. Let us have a look at the last question. The last question that we have is, when 100 ml of 80% W by V, NH is mixed with certain amount of 40% W by V NH solution of density 1.2 gram per ml. The percentage concentration of final solution becomes 60% W by V. Find the molarity of the final solution. So there are two ways to solve this question. One is a very quick way. You will definitely get the answer right within seconds. Another is a long way to see how much weight of NOH you got from solution 1, how much volume of solution 1 is taken. And then from solution 2, because you are mixing the two solutions, two NO solution to obtain a third final solution, right? And then see how much weight of NOH is taken from second solution and the volume. So that is one way of solving this question, which is a bit lengthy and tedious. But we can do this question very easily, very quickly. How can we do that? Because we just need the last statement to solve this question. The final solution is 60%. W by V. So what does that mean? That means in final solution, 60 grams of solute NaOH is present in 100 ml of solution. This is the definition of weight by volume, right? 60 grams means how many moles? Moles means 60 given mass divided by molar mass that is 1.5 moles of NaOH is present in 100 ml, right? So, if we take 100 ml of solution, we have 1.5 mole. So, 100 ml of this solution has 1.5 moles. So, if I take 1000 ml, how many moles will be there? 15 moles. So, 15 moles of NaOH will be present in 1000 ml. Got it guys? Yes. So, molarity of the final solution is moles here by volume that is 1 liter 1000 ml moles by volume. So, the molarity will be 15. So, you should mark your answer as 15. Just from this data you can calculate the molarity if you know the basic definition and the formula. So, the 15 will be your answer moles by volume. So, if you give answer as 15, well done, kudos, good going guys. 15 is the answer and there is another way as I told you the lengthy long way of doing this question. Taking the weight from each solution, the volume and then finally calculating the molarity. But save time guys, be smart. Smart work is important. You can do the question like this. As I told you 15 molar from W by V just converted into molarity. So that's all guys. I hope you did your test very well. And as your JE mains first attempt is coming. So these type of tests will definitely help you as a mock test right, to prepare better for your J-Mains. So all the best. I hope you are getting good marks in this chemistry portion. Bye. Check here. Stay tuned.